Alrighty. I feel I know. Let me get started. Uh, namaste everyone. Um, really excited to have all of you this Sunday at Hindi University. Um, as you know, my name is Ashutosh and we meet every Sunday 8 a.m. U.S. Pacific time, which is time on the west coast of the U.S., California region, um, to learn about the Hindi language. Um, for those of you who are completely new to Hindi University, you can learn more about us by going to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Hindi University, one word. And if you're interested in joining the, the live classes that we have every Sunday, you can get all the details on our page, which is tiny.cc slash Hindi University. I definitely want you all to, to bookmark this page because we continue to make changes on this page. Um, uh, you'll learn about the, the practice sessions that we have on a regular basis. So in a week, we have about six you know, practice sessions in different time zones so you can get, get all the details about the uh, the practice sessions here also other ways are uh, everyone the community is interacting whether it is through for whatsapp or whether it's through telegram or or discord now right so you get all the details here similarly if you missed any of the the previous sessions that's the best way for you to um, you know get all the the previous videos although i'm a little bit behind to upload the the last three or four classes but by and large, you will find all the, the previous classes here. Okay? Uh, similarly, the big books we've been following. And as you know, this year, our theme is to have a, a the, the blended curriculum. So we have the first half of the class, like, you know, really for complete beginners and second half of the class is intermediate plus. And for beginners, we are doing two books, um, Elementary Hindi by, you know, Richard DeLacy. He's a professor at Harvard University and Pingu Learns Hindi, which is the book written by us. And for the Intermediate Plus, we are doing blended curriculum, which includes uh, Rupert Snell, uh, you know, as well as Usha Jain, as well as Kavita Kumar, right? And some of it's my stuff as well. So we have a, a pretty interesting and, uh, you know, uh, fascinating course throughout the throughout the year right so at any time you have any questions you definitely ask you know the, the theme is that we start simple in the class and we gradually build and you know in, in increments the, the complexity of the class okay um, as you know in the previous class we started we were focusing on on chapter number seven from Richard DeLacy's book which is elementary Hindi and then we were going over imperatives and all of a sudden we had that, you know, the kind of connectivity issue. So um, just to kind of recap, we will continue chapter seven from um, elementary Hindi, Richard Delacy, and we'll start the topic called Hindi imperatives. Okay. By the end of this class, my goal is that all of you Regardless of your level, you'll be very comfortable with, you know, giving commands and requesting someone to do something in Hindi. Okay, uh, this is a very simple topic, but uh, pretty useful and powerful on your day to day uh, Hindi conversation. So with that, let's get started. Uh, the imperative, you know, mood. An imperative mood is nothing but, you know, it's the, the grammatical concept that you use to give commands. To give commands and make requests okay it's pretty common across all languages right so as an example let's see i'm gonna ask some of you to volunteer um, let's say jdg okay very simple if you have to ask someone to 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 go and give a speech right how will you give it in english just simple Give a speech. Yeah, that's it, right? You will just tell them, give a speech. Okay, would you consider this, uh, what is the tone behind it? Would you make it like just direct or what kind of, how would you, you know, maintain your tone? It's pretty direct, pretty authoritative. Pretty direct, right? But let's say you are meeting your, someone you respect a lot more. Would you still keep it direct or would you make it a little bit more, you know, formal? Or let's say Please you want to make it formal, how would you make it formal? Please give a speech. Please give a speech. Please give a speech. So if you have to make it a formal, you will say, 
please give us versus uh, versus this one which is where you are saying I'm gonna make I was mute so and then I'm gonna make JDG and mute um, versus this one um, you know give a speech okay so this is a good distinction at least in English how about some in other languages anyone would like to volunteer and share their thoughts on how request and command they work in other languages Let's see, you can raise your hand or you can unmute yourself. Okay, Anita ji, Professor Anita, yeah, go for it. Um, well, in some other languages that I know, you drop the subject pronoun and you just keep the verb and sometimes the verb gets modified as well. Okay, so let's, are you thinking about French or German? Which one? For example, French. French, okay. Give an example of just the same thing. Uh, speech. How would you say speech? Or you um, can take the other as well, it's okay. So, yeah, you could say, fait un discours. So, the you is dropped, you just keep the verb. So, that is formal or semi-formal or informal? Uh, it applies to um, to both of them. I you see. drop the subject pronoun. I see, I see. And it's the same thing regardless of whether you are making it, uh, you know, a formal request or a command versus semi-formal or informal. I mean, in order to suggest versus uh, giving a command, then you can, of course, add the please and, uh -huh. and soften with your intonation as well. I see. Re the exclamation mark and have the intonation accordingly. Awesome, awesome, awesome. How about in Spanish? Anybody would like to say how it works in Spanish before and then we jump to Hindi after that. Good to have some comparison. Anyone? You can unmute yourself. Spanish has a formal and an informal. Uh -huh. They change the ending of the verb. Okay, can you give an example? Uh, like, um, now I'm forgetting what I'm... Uh, uh, okay, so for, to speak like habla or hable. Okay, it's H-A-B-L-E, right? Right, for informal. And you change okay. the H to an E for um, formal. So this is informal. And then the other one is E. Hable. E. Able. And then okay. you have plural forms of that too. Okay. Four forms of each of these. Four forms, yeah. Because you have a, a two two singulars and two plural. I see, and got formal, it. Got yeah. it. Okay. Well, in Spain, you do. In okay. South America, okay. you don't have the informal plural. Got it. Got it. <laughs> that is great. So, so similarly in Hindi, like when you're giving when you are defining imperatives, right? There are, by and large, there are five categories, okay? And I'll go with an example of, and they go by, you know, from very uh, informal to very formal, okay? And I'm gonna go over all of these, basically. So the way it works is, let's say you have a word called bolna, and bolna is to speak, okay? Bolna, ber with O, Le and then na. And as I said, like it ranges from completely formal. So when you're making a very, very sort of, sorry, informal, what you will do is you'll drop the, the na part. Okay. And this is, I'm going to call it number one. And you will just simply call it bowl. Bowl. We'll go over detail for each of those, but this one, it's really, you are giving a pretty direct command, okay? To someone you know pretty close, you are very familiar with them and you're com completely comfortable giving them a command, such as your very close friend, okay? They're giving you a call. I think I was giving this example. Let's say, you know, you are do busy doing your household work and then you get your cell phone ringing and you you see your close friend calling you pick up the phone and you will respond as Sharmila ji, how would you respond? 
So all you will do is like, which is a very common thing in, in India, right? Or Hindi speakers, like you pick the phone and the first thing they'll say is ha bol, like, which is basically nothing but yes, all right, speak, right? Bol, very, very like direct, bol, right? Speak up, right? So that's your very informal, bol, okay? Then it's also used with young children, which, you know, if you're close to them and, um, um, right? Second one is basically you will have semi formal. Okay, semi formal. Um, I'll go over example of each of these a little bit more, but right now your base word is nothing but bold now. Okay, for semi formal, what you'll do is you'll remove the, the na at the ending and you will put in o sound. Okay, which is nothing, which makes it, so the base term was bold already. All you have done is putting O at the end, which is bolo. Bolo. Okay, same thing, you know, you're getting a call from someone. Okay, but you want to, don't want to be too direct. Okay, and then you pick up the phone, you will say, ha, bolo. Okay, this time you'll be like, ha, bolo, you know. And then you can keep on going, catch I, what do you want? Okay. Um, it's common among like spouse, like, you know, you want to, you don't want to be too informal. You do want to be too formal, right? So this is sort of an in-between category. Uh, so you will see often time like husband and wife, you know, when they're talking, they, they, they will stick with this part, humble. Okay. Um, so that's your semi-formal. The third one is basically, it's a bit more formal. Anyone can think of what it is? Bolie. Bolie. Very good. Bolie. Very good. So you have base term as it is, and all you're doing is putting E A B E. Bolie. Okay. Bolie. And what do you think, who do you think we'll use it for or any example you can think of where you will make this formal sort of command bolie or requesting someone to, to speak. Uh, I think for me, uh, I use this the most because I find it difficult sometimes to discern whether I'm, I'm informal or formal, especially with people on the street. I use up and, and bolie and so I don't use the tomb. Okay, so this is pretty safe because by default, you, you like to give respect, right? So by default, you end up giving like, okay, bolie, chalie. I, I even do it with the kids that I knew on the street. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's like, so this is nothing but what JD was saying, like, please give a speech. And this one, you don't have to say, kripaya bolie, okay? When you say bolie, it, 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 it implies that there is a, you know, uh, there is a please embedded in that, like bolie. Right. So the beauty of using imperative is that just by verb, just speaking the verb and the tone behind it, you can really, you don't have to really say the, the extra words along with it. Like you don't sometimes have to say even the, the pronouns. Okay. Uh, so this is your, uh, the formal version of imperative. So remove the na and then put e, whole e. Okay. Um, the next one is basically uh, like extra polite version of it. Extra polite, which interestingly everyone covers. Like it, uh, um, like academically uh, growing up in Hindi, like you know you speak versus you 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 learn in school. I didn't really learn this one, right? I mean I heard it, but it was not really covered because it's it's not that commonly used in, 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 in a day-to-day -day basis, okay? Um, this is nothing but you have the, the base thing as it is, bold, and then you put yega, okay? I hope you can read it, boliega, okay? Boliega. And um, boliega is really indicating that you, you, you want something to happen in, in the future, okay? Boliega. 
okay rather than this is less, less of a command but like you are saying like you know you you know agar aap wahan jaye to wahan boliyega aur speech dijiyega okay um, so this is the extra polite version we'll take more and more examples of each category but at least i want to show you all of them okay the five version informal semi formal formal extra polite and then the one that is basically your verb as an infinitive form itself the fifth form which is basically what do you think it will be what is the infinitive form of bolna bolna as it is it's a trick question right bolna okay bolna okay so just the verb itself in the infinitive form depending on how it is being said it's also considered imperative okay imperative and this is nothing but that you know the action is to be taken at some point in the future can be in the future so this is not like not immediate future and in the so the distinction between these four versus this one is these fours you can put them in the spectrum of like you know from completely informal to formal this one is it's not really following that category okay you regardless of whoever you are speaking you can use it bolna but you are it doesn't mean that you want them that to happen in the immediate future but like you know it's the in the later future sometimes okay any question so far anyone before we dig deeper into each of those and look at more examples so far everyone is clear right okay right. so what we'll do is we'll take some examples i'm going to erase it and then i'm going to give it to everyone i'll start with a simple one and all you have to do in the first exercise is follow the pattern okay uh so so this time i'm going to give you a word called let's see andarji what do you what is in hindi to sit bye na back na very good okay i'm going to say back na okay back na so you have a bit a th and na i ask everyone to write down all the the five forms of of patna and um, and then will so this one would be the sort of the informal so we'll start with informal then semi formal formal this one we call it extra polite extra polite and then this one we call it uh, i don't know how they refer it in the book but i'm going to just call it the infinitive form infinitive okay so i'm going to give everyone uh, a minute or so this should be quick it should not take any anyone more time if you okay so i'm going to move myself it's back now okay so think of it as someone is coming to your house you have to have the same tone okay how will you tell them like come sit versus please sit so take your time write it down and then i'm gonna let's see how everyone is doing okay awesome please give it a try even if you find it slightly harder because it will help me you know uh, in case if i need to go deeper into anything okay delia ji you want to give it a try how will you make an informal sort of request here bad bad okay bad what will be your tone just like you said bad 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 very good <laughs> okay 
Third sound. One more time. Bat. Third. Very good. Bat. Okay. Now let's do semi-formal. Beto. 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 Okay. And then formal. Betie. 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 And then extra polite would be. Betie ga. Betie ga. Betie ga. And then the last one, infinitive. Betna. Betna. Okay. Um. Let's see. Um. You comfortable using them in a sentence like this independently, they work quite well. Okay. But if you want to take one step further, okay, are you comfortable using any of them in an example? Let's give it a try. Okay. Let's use this and then we'll go in the other one. Me? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um... Which one bad or better? Yeah, start start with this. Bad, okay. Uh, tu yaha bad. Tu yaha bad, okay, very good. Tu yaha bad, okay. Tum yaha bad ho. Okay, very good, right? So, tu yaha bad. Okay, tum yaha, sorry. Tu yaha bad. Tu yaha bad ho, and then? Aap yaha bad ye. Aap yaha bad ye, and then? Even up, I think. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Up. 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 Okay. Awesome. And then. Last one. Um. Tum kal betna. Okay. Tum kal betna. Okay. So this is not really the 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 near future, basically. Agar up. Let's say you were to tell me like, agar up. Um. India jaye. Okay. I'm not saying when up India jai to up unke gar jake batna. Okay, like something in, in, in like you know, uh, um, you know, and it's for any pronoun you can use. Okay, but it's like not like in the immediate future. Yeah, but great job, right? So you imagine like you know, you have five friends coming to your house, depending on how, or how close you are with them. Okay, this may sound like this is very informal, but it like the tone implies that you're pretty close to the person so don't think of it as completely like you are disrespecting it right um, so that's how any questions so far anyone so far I, I want to see if people have any doubt or question I have a question yeah please go ahead um, where is the T is a when you say bed is it like at the front of your teeth and a H or is it at the back yeah who, who would like to help here because it, it this one the pronunciation sounds much better like if someone else is i will say how native speaker will say which is bad th, th. so you let's see who would like to to explain tongue touches the roof of your mouth say it one more time bad better th. Th is correct sound okay sharanji were you speaking Yes, I was saying uh, the tongue touches the, it's a palatial, so the tongue touches the roof of your mouth. Thank you. Th, okay, th. Yeah, bad. And the question was from Wendy Ji? Yeah. Okay, awesome. But any other question? All right. So far, so good, right? This is hopefully is not too too hard right now. Okay. Now let's say I'm gonna change it. We'll do some more practice here, and then we'll change it to to something else. Okay. So, um, so now let's say to stand up. So opposite of that. So this time we're gonna speed it up, pick up the speed, right? So so far it was sit down to sit down and then now to stand up let's do it quickly rather than writing it down let's say uh, jdg um what is it uh, karto karo okay to stand up is or to stand is i'm not sure car 
my pronunciation is not good here. Khada hona, I think that's what you are thinking. Khada hona, okay? Yeah. Which is correct. The other one is who would like to help here? Uthna. Very good. Uthna. Uthna. Uh, what JD is saying, I think it's Khada hona. Yes. Khada. Which is correct. Both of them are correct. Like, you know, so Khada ho. Like, okay? So, like, you know, you know, I mean, things have changed now, but growing up, the, the teachers were, were were a little bit raw in that sense, like they, they were very disciplined, they'll keep the class pretty disciplined, right? They are very loving, but at the same time, they're pretty strict also, okay? Um, so if somebody is, you know, making a mistake or doing, like, you know, uh, throwing tantrums in the class, like the first thing, they'll say, Khraho. Right, so it's not going to be like a very formal one, right? Khadaho, which is basically your like you know the same as like you know um, your informal basically, right? Or the other one would be ut. Okay, ut. Okay, um, and then next one, who would like to give it a try? Simple now. I think you are just following the formula. Utho. Utho, very good. Utho. Utho, okay. This is also used to when you are telling someone to wake up. Okay. Um, like, you know, kids are sleeping, you know, first thing in the morning, you have to start running late for the school. First thing you say, like, Utho, okay. Um, jaldi Utho, like, wake up quickly now. Okay. Utho. Okay. Next one. Uthiye. Very good. Uthiye. Okay. This can also mean a little bit of, there can be a sarcasm in it. Right. So let's say, let's say, you know, you're used to using utho for your spouse. Okay. Um, but if they're sleeping longer, okay. And all of a sudden you change from utho to uthiye. Like it, there can be a, a tone of sarcasm, like, you know, that, like, you know, Oh, you know, you're treating them with extra respect to, to give the indicator that like, you know, you're, you know, sleeping more than you should be sleeping in and you're running late for the weekend or activities, right? So, uthiye. Okay. Um, next one. Uthiega. Uthiega. Very good. And this one, as you guys all know, uthna. Uthna. Very good. Okay. Good so far. Now I want to hear from you guys. What kind of command and request you give, and you want to try this out now? Um, so, Ashish, mere sawal hai. To utna uh, um, utna then is more like get up, right? And um, uh, karahona is more like stand up. Is that correct? That is correct. That is correct actually, so I may have incorrectly written there. Like utna is really to 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 get up. Okay, versus. So yeah, because we had this in practice yesterday. We were talking about this. So is what is uh, so kare ho jao? Is that like that's just using a compound to do the same thing to say stand up? It, exactly right, because you're changing. You're telling them to change the state, and that's why this. Oh, I have to go back to the states. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right from sitting down to that's why it's like kare ho jao. Yeah. Good question. Though. Okay. Anyone else? Now I want to ask you guys. Okay, Wendy, go for it. Can I say Bister Sa Ut? Okay. So like question. Get up, from, get up from the bed or something. Yes, that's right. Ut. Right. So I'll say it all the time, like to my son. Ut. That means like, you know, wake up. Right? Ut. And this itself, like, you know, will 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 convey the meaning. You don't have to say you know, Adi Ut, or, you know, you don't have to say the name, like, you know, it implies that you're telling the person Ut. Okay, anyone else? Let's see. Think about all the commands and requests that you use most frequently in your day-to-day, -day, you know, job or wherever you are. Tatiana Ji, how are you doing? You want to give it a try, Tatiana ji? 
okay if you are muted let's go susan ji how are you doing namaskar sir <laughs> um, i usually tell my daughter um bartan dho okay so let's see so to oh, bartan saaf karo okay so to wash uh utensils or dishes utensils okay to do the dishes okay to do the dishes and the verb is basically it's saaf karna saaf karna to clean but because it's the dishes it's bartan saaf karna okay so how will you give it now the command all the form five forms um, so bartan saaf kar mm -hmm. bartan saaf karo bartan saaf kijiye mm -hmm. bartan saaf kijiye ka Mm -hmm. and again button saf karna okay very good awesome now i want to change the gears i want you to use two imperatives one after the other consecutively or maybe three okay um so books usually don't cover it that's why i want you to get comfortable case two which is using multiple multiple imperatives imperatives okay it this is nothing but like you know you're saying in sequence like somebody coming to your house what you will say is you will say please come right so which is which is basically nothing but aaiye okay uh like please come aaiye and then baithiye it's like sequence right aaiye baithiye you know and then comes please come sit and then pani pijiye pani pijiye okay pani pijiye and then you will say relax pijiye you see i all of a sudden i i made a huge thing out of it right and i don't need to know everything in hindi i need to know the basic words but i can just by the use of imperatives it has conveyed multiple things i told the person please come you know have a seat have some water okay and relax and enjoy basically right um i want you guys to think of something like that okay think about the scenario in your mind you can use feel free to use some of these repeat you know these words as well each of you should think about a different scenario at least try to have two or three imperatives one after the other okay and think where you will use it okay this time i'm going to give you some more time so you'll get like 2 3 minutes each of you think about it okay and then write it down okay try your best Okay. Let's see someone who has not tried before. I want to hear from them. Meeta ji, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm okay. Thank you. <laughs> you want to try it out? So I did um, Uto Chalo Samudra Me Terno. Oh, very good, right? So you said someone to Uto, wake up. Mm -hmm. I Lo, take take this tea or Samudra Me Terno. Samudra Me Terno. So let's say you don't want to use compound verb. You said terna and lena. That's why you said terlo. But you want to just simply samudra me 
Just use Terna. Terna would be? Ter. Tero. Oh, Tero, okay. Tero. So it looks like Tyro, but there's nothing but Ter with A and then R with Tero. So Samudra Tero, okay? Or swimming, Karo. If you want to keep it simple, if you don't know Samudra is ocean, you want to, it's, if you're finding it hard, you know, to swim is Terna, or you can say swimming Karna. And you can just say swimming karo. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Great, great. Anyone else? Someone who's not tried yet. Barbara ji, how are you doing? Barbara ji is very dedicated. I always see her comments on Facebook. So how are you doing, Barbara ji? Can you can you hear us okay? Uh, I am listening, but difficult yeah, I, for me. Okay, I'll help out. What what kind of command you want to give to someone? Uh, I I can say, cursi par betio. Okay, okay. So or cursi se uto. Okay, so you can say aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. uh, cursi. Hmm? Cursi par. Uh, uh, cursi aye. Uh, Betie. Very good. Betie. Yeah, very good. Okay. Kursi per betie. And then you want to tell them, eat food. Eh, eh, cu, uh, uh, aye kursi se uh, utie. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's say you want to tell them, wash your hands and eat food. Eh, eh, wash your hands. Allora, uh, Do, okay, uh, hands, you understand? Uh, ah. Hands, um, hands, hot yeah. seat. Ah. Allora, uh, aye, uh, aye, um, at, at, uh, at se, uh, um, yeah. saf caro. Mm -hmm. Ha saf, okay. Ha. Ha saf karo. Okay, oh. you can same. You can either keep the same. Si, or... eh, at saf eh, kar, kar, kar Okay, so this is interesting. Ha. Very interesting. Ha, okay. si, so si. this is kijie, and I'll get to it why it's kijie. Okay. I'll, get, I'll get to it. It's kijie. Okay, and then? Uh, then? Eat food. Food. It food. Oh. Allora, uh, aye, uh, cana, 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 Okay, okay, thank you. you may, see, it's so easy, it's not hard. <laughs> so, anyone can tell why it is KGA? There are a number of uh, irregular verbs like uh, Karna and Dana and Lena. Uh, let's see, do I have them all? No, there's about five. I I, I don't know all of them. KGA, LGA, DGA, uh, <laughs> I forgot. Amazing, amazing. So, there uh, you go. so what she said was there are some irregular words. So you have Dana, Lena, and then and then two more. Karna and uh, I'm sorry. So somebody said Pina also? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So these are irregular verbs, okay? And when you're using with the pronoun a, okay? They follow a slightly different pattern than what you're using. Like for the other verbs, you have aye, batye, you know, khaye. For, the, for these one, they change into dena becomes dga. Or lena becomes ligie. Okay? Karna becomes KGA. And then Pina becomes. Who would like to try this one? 
That's PGA. Okay, so we started with case one, which is your using the imperatives independently. Case two is basically using multiple imperatives one after the other. This I consider this one as case three that you have knowledge about irregular verbs. We'll go into detail about what irregular verbs are, you know, and again, like I'm assuming um, Professor Richard DeLacy will cover it at some point, but these are the verbs, they don't follow the standard, you know, the, the, the word that you have in Hindi language. So we just think of it like special verbs in Hindi. Okay. Uh, so for them, just remember like how the ending is changing. This is your case number three. Okay. Case number four, how like in all the so far cases, nobody asked me, it's all affirmative scenarios where you are asking someone to do something. What if it is a negative scenario? You want people to not do something. Okay. That's your case four. Okay. Isn't it always uh, used with mutt or, yes. so, or uh, there's, there's another way to do it. But last night I was watching a movie and there was a guy who said, Hazmat. And I was like, whoa, that's, <laughs> don't laugh. <laughs> I was like really shocked because it's yeah. totally wrong. It's, it's wrong grammatically. You're supposed to use mutt before the verb, but, but Hazmat is like, yeah. do not laugh. Informally. So, that's it. so basically there are two ways of doing that. Typically you would say, you know, Maha, it's na sound basically na okay typically you will say um um you know kursi par kursi par na baithiye aur khana na khaiye okay so either you can say that if you want to be a little bit more forceful as you mentioned right you can use mat also okay mat aaiye kursi par mat baithiye haath saaf Mat kijiye, khana mat khaiye. Like you are very upset with someone, <laughs> they decline your invitation, and you know you are basically saying the same thing, but you know you're telling someone to not do something. Okay, mujhse baat mat kijiye. Don't talk to me. Like you know when when people are upset with each other, uh, you know same thing. I the, the example I give, I you know, you know I give a four, give a, my my friend is upset with me, and I give him a call. Oh, don't talk to me. Okay. You know, there can be multiple ways of saying that. Musse, you know, baat mat kar, right? But, you know, bol mat itself implies you're imper using imperative. It implies that you are upset and you, you don't want to talk. Okay. Um, let's spend some more time on this scenario. Case number four. I want you guys to think about it. Just like how you thought about using multiple imperatives one after the other. I want to give some time and this time I'm going to choose different folks. Tell me how you would tell people to, to, to give negative command, not negative command per se, but to not do something. Okay. I mean, it could be simple, like, you know, how, you know, you have the, the sign, no trespassing, right? I mean, uh, trespassing, mat ki jiye, right? I mean, sim sim simple, simple things. I mean, I, I, I don't want to say it, but like there's a, in India, there's a, a bad habit of spitting, right? I mean, especially when you have the, the pan, right? You can see mm -hmm. the thing, you know, and that's why it's, uh, sometimes there's a sign, yaha mat, like to spit is thukna. That's why yaha mat thukye, right? You will see that, right? So, uh, well, very good, right? Cigarette mat piyo. Awesome. So Kelly ji already answered cigarette mat piyo, which is don't, don't smoke. Okay. Anybody else? Scott, let's see. Let's talk to Scott. Scott G, how are you doing? Doing good. Can you give some commands, someone to not do something? Um, let's say uh, don't watch television. Um, mm -hmm. Television, uh, mat deko. Yes, television mat deko. Okay. I, I, I say this thing to my, my kids, like, you know, don't sit on the iPad. Okay, don't watch iPad. How will I change it to this 
Hai Pen? Um, don't sit on it, did you say? Sit in the sense, like, don't watch iPad. Same thing. Oh. Uh, uh, iPad mat deco? Yeah, iPad mat deco. iPad, iPad mat deco. Okay. Anyone else? Thanks so much. Uh, who is comfortable by this point to participate? Disina ji, how are you doing? Okay. You have to unmute yourself, Tisina ji. Okay. Tom, we'll come back to you, Tom. Yes, I'd like to say, Mat boliye. Mat boliye, awesome. Mat boliye. Please don't talk. Don't yeah. speak. Yeah, Mat yeah. You know, when you go to AMC, like they have this thing, when you're watching this thing, you know, don't keep your foot camera on or not camera the phone on or something like right? sharanji how are you doing i'm gonna actually have a question because my my internet just uh cacked out a little okay. bit um did you say if when we're forming these sentences we're using mat instead of like nahi because it is uh in a command situation that is correct so either use na no, basically, or mat. Okay. Oh. Okay, great, thanks. Awesome. Who, uh, let's see, Andersi, why don't you try? Andersi? If you can think of, just think in English or your native language and then it will help out. Okay, mic is off, no problem, Andrzej. Akhilji? Akhil, Akhil Gopalji? Okay, uh, no problem. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, dessert mat khaye. Okay, or you can say mitha. Mitha. I tell it to my mom all the time. Like she's a pre diabetic, right? And then more and more urge to, to eat sweet, right? So meet up Okay, awesome. Uh, who else? Somebody I wanted to come from you guys rather than me nominating. So let's see who by now who is comfortable. Someone who's not try, right. Can so I try far. one? Yeah, please. Please. Can I say uh bike lane may mat Chalie. Very good. Bike lane may much chalie. Okay, very good. Bike lane may. Bike lane may much chalie. Great. Okay. Who else? Akshuji, this is kind of long, but Bacho Chappal se ghar ke andar mat chao. Very good. Chappal leka ghar mein Yeah, very good. So I'm going to make it even fancy. Very good. Chappal Laker Gar Me Mat Aye or Aho, right? Usually, kids will do that. Chappal is nothing but your flip flop. And Chappal Laker, that means like the two words, Lena and then Ana, right? So, don't bring your flip flops in the house. Chappal Laker. Garme in the house mataiye. So it's really not, it's really like garme mataiye. Don't come in the house. <laughs> don't come in the house, right? It's garme mataiye. But then you say chappal lekar garme mataiye. Don't come in the house with your flip flops on. Okay. Uh, awesome. Anyone else? Jnj, hey, you want to give it a try? Uh, um, the, oh no. Shurab, Which one? Say it again. Shurab, Shurab mat uh, PGA. Very good. Sharab mat PJ, don't uh, drink alcohol, okay? Uh, and then tante someone pani, was trying. Tant pani mat um, PJ. Which one? Tant pani or kharab pani? Tant pani. I, what is the word before pani? Pani, I understand what Pani, water. Uh, water. Tant pani mat PJ. Tant pani mat 
पीजिए पानी पानी मत मत पीजिए ओके राइट इट डाउन इफ यू कैन करेक्ट आई एम हियरिंग द फर्स्ट वर्ड दैट यू सेड बिफोर पानी आई वांट टू राइट इट डाउन मे बी आई अंडरस्टैंड आई सी ओके ओके ऑसम before we switch to the last section so far so good right the four, four four cases are clear right case 1 just using imperative the five forms case 2 using them in sequence like multiple imperatives okay trying to make a like a rhyming thing out of it case 3 is remembering that the four is going to go they use a different ending case 4 is the the negative okay um so that's really the summary of imperatives i do want to use this opportunity to to go over the rupert snell scenario one more time where he has a writer okay so i'm going to share my screen and um, i want to ask folks at least who are comfortable um reading the 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 devanagari script okay to to read this uh, part from chapter number 5 of rupert snell okay so i'm going to share my screen and uh, i'm going to make this thing a bigger hopefully you can read it i'll try to make it bigger okay oh yo is it too small or people can read it i'll try to make it slightly more bigger okay so this is nothing but like a conversation between kamla and suresh okay who would like to give it a try so one can play a role of kamla and one can be suresh and one can be raj so let's see donna ji you comfortable reading it right uh yes okay so you are kamla and we have uh -huh. one suresh we need someone from the folk side who can read it devnagari jd you can read devnagari right han ji Aji, okay, so you are Suresh. We need Raj now. Someone has to play a role of Raj. I can do Raj. Okay, let's do Anitra ji. You are Raj. Okay, great. Let's do it, guys. Read it. Okay, I am Suresh. Khana, tayar hai, bethiye. Kriya chato tum akeli. नाहि हो राज बिहे दूसरा दूसरे बच्चे कहा है वे तो अभी बाहर है मात्र मुझको चाय दो मुझको दूध पसंद नहीं तू तो अभी बहुत छोटा है बेटा सुरेश अंकल अम्मा से कहिए कि मैं छोटा बच्चा नहीं हूं ओके आई एम गोइंग टू मूव टू दिस वन ओके सुरेश यही राज तुम हो बहुत बारे आदमी हो कमला राज सब को चाइदो सुनिए सुरेश राज बड़ा आदमी तो है लेकिन बड़ा शैतान भी है ओके ऑसम ग्रेट जॉब सो देयर आर मल्टीपल 
uh, things going on here i hope you guys at least folks who can uh, like read devnagari at least you had one level of understanding even folks who cannot read the devnagari at least you heard how the imperatives are being used you can see baithiye was there like to sit down you can see um, you know again same thing raj to bat raj because is a younger kid right raj to yahan bat either mat bat udar bat right similarly like you know raj is giving a command chai do amma mujhe chai do right she is elder but like he is because he is still very close to the mom so he is not saying chai dijiye it's like chai do um mujhe doodh doodh pasand nahi i do not like the milk okay and then mom is saying mat pi see that right chai mat pi doodh pi remember pina is a regular word but the mom is not using it in the respectful form aap that's why it's pi right chai mat pi doodh pi okay tu to tu to abhi bahut chhota hai beta you are very young okay um then look at it amma suresh ankal uh, suresh ankal amma se kahiye kehna is the word but kahiye is used as an imperative okay मैं छोटा बेटा नहीं हूं नाउ दे इज अरकाजम इन द नेक्स्ट वन सुरेश इज सेंग नहीं राज तुम तो बहुत बड़े आदमी होज अंगर किड एंड मॉम इज सेंग यू आर यू नो यंगर किड एंड ही इज लाइक नो आई एम नॉट अंगर किड यू नो एंड देन अंकल इज सेंग नो यू आर नॉट यू आर अ वेरी वेरी बिग पर्सन लाइक यू नॉट यू आर नॉट अ किड एंड देन ही सेंग कमला राजा साहब को चाय दो सो राजा साहब इज नथिंग बट लाइक यू नो हाउ वुड समी डिस्क्राइब इट इन in in english a kings you are like a royal person like give a royal person like a, a drink so all of a sudden you see chai do okay chai you know de ni bola usko chai do right so and then mom is saying suniye suresh raj bada aadmi to hai he is a big person but at the same time is pretty notorious right so that's what they're saying okay so i want i i know we have not covered like devnagari writing okay so the, don't don't get discouraged if you don't know the devnagari uh, reading here or writing at least you heard the conversation right and day to day conversation even if you can um really understand which imperatives are being used that's pretty good you know a good thing at this level okay um i'll stop the broadcast um but um you know um for, 